Well, hi class, welcome to unit four of first and second Corinthians. Believe it or not, we've made it to the halfway mark. And I've been so pleased by the level of engagement that each of you across the board has shown toward the text of 1 Corinthians and the Witherington text. Now, sometimes students have a hard time engaging a higher level textbook, such as Witherington, very famous professor of New Testament at Asbury. That hasn't been the case in this class. I get the clear sense from our engagement together that you're digesting, understanding, and even entering into a dialogue with Ben Witherington, and I really do love to see that. Well, you just turned in a reflection paper to me, and I'll be grading that in the next day or two, posting my indiv individual responses to your work on Moodle as well as the grade. This week, in terms of the coursework, you get a little bit of a break and that there's no paper to turn in. The purpose of this is to allow you to really dive in to your research sources. The next step of the term paper is the biggest step, and that's showing me and showing yourself that you have read through your research sources and pulled out plenty of nuggets that are going to make for a deep and well-researched paper. So the purpose of not burdening you with a lot more assignments right now simply is the time that it takes to do your research uh, is typically greater than the time that it takes to actually write the paper during the final phase of the assignment. So please don't let that sneak up on you. Uh, this week, we're going to be looking at the last section of 1 Corinthians. And studying in particular the schisms that had formed around various worship practices in this church. That's the glue that holds chapters 11 through 14 together. We see that worship practices related to head coverings were a problem in chapter 11. And then worship practices related to the improper reception of the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, in the latter half of chapter 11. Then in chapters 12 and 14, we're going to get uh, the most important New Testament teaching on spiritual gifts that exist and that teaching brackets the love hymn in chapter 13. That says a lot right there, just structurally. It says to us that Paul is trying to get people to understand that the usage of spiritual gifts is fundamentally rooted in love, in the upbuilding of the community. After that, we're going to turn to chapter 15 and discuss the resurrection of Jesus and the central role resurrection plays, not only in the good theology of Paul, but in what was apparently the bad theology of certain Corinthians, and I think you'll enjoy that discussion together. If you have any questions or concerns as we move through this unit, please don't hesitate to contact me at jrice at leeuniversity.edu. If we need to set up a phone or a Skype conversation, we can certainly do that. I'm available to aid you in your success. Have a great week. God bless.